Draw My Life videos are YouTubers' personal ways of illustrating their life stories. Many of these stories have romantic twists and end with mostly happy endings, but amongst these videos lie some depressing stories of despair. These very videos give you an insight into how sad some YouTubers' lives were before they started. Here are the 5 saddest YouTuber Draw My Life videos. Markiplier to this day is one of the most successful YouTubers on the website with over 10 million subscribers and his very own diamond play button. However, before he found success in his life, he tells his very sad life story. The illustrations start out cheerful until Mark describes his father's final words, which leaves Mark depressed and speechless until the video continues. I really wanted to do something special for the thousand subscriber milestone, or not thousand subscriber, thousand video milestone. And uh, my father bought, brought me some bad news. Uh, he, he put a piece of paper in front of me and uh, just let me read it without saying anything. And I, I was a pretty smart kid, so I understood every word that it said, all the techno mumbo jumbo, but the main thing is that um, in basically big bold letters it said cancer and the really bad kind of cancer. So uh, that was a really tough time for me because I, I, I kind of lost sight of what I was doing. Everything seemed kind of clear to me before, but right now everything was kind of just getting away from me. And one year later, we were all home for summer and my dad was getting pretty bad with cancer and he, he wasn't himself anymore. But one morning, we were all woken up by my stepmom, Dee, screaming, and we went downstairs to see that my dad was dying. And the last words that he said to me were, I love you so much. And I held my dad's hand as he died. Ryan Heger owns the YouTube channel Niger Heger, which is one of the most popular channels on YouTube, but after watching his Draw My Life video, you too will understand that Ryan's life has been one which has been riddled with bullying and been second best to his brother. Ryan describes how he overcome his depressing life and became one of the most successful YouTube channels on earth. So I was never going to do a Draw My Life video because to be honest, I personally don't think my life is nearly as dramatic or interesting as some of the other Draw My Life sets. I also have an older brother who I've always felt competitive with my whole life. He was always better than me in everything. He would beat me in challenges, competitions, video games, and of course he was naturally gifted in judo. Fifth grade, I moved schools for middle school. Sixth grade was specifically a terrible year for me. Not only did I lose all my friends because it was a new school, but because it was a charter school, we all had to take tests to see where we would be placed, I guess, and for some reason I got placed with the older kids. At the time I thought this was a good thing because I thought older kids would think I'm cool because I skipped a grade, however it was pretty much the opposite. So this is the part of the story that most of you don't know about because I never really addressed it publicly, but I know a lot of you watching this can relate, so I got bullied. A lot. You know, nothing really crazy, just your typical getting pushed down to the ground, being made fun of for no reason. And yes, I remember every single one of them, including the worst of them. Again, not gonna use a real name, but we'll call him Richard. Because as you know, another name for Richard is Dick. See, Dick was such a Richard to me that I'd actually make excuses to my mom why I couldn't go to school or why I needed to change schools. So I was hating life at the time and wondering why someone so mean could be so popular by picking on me. It even got to the point where I had some darker thoughts at the time that I think most, if not all teenagers, go through at some point in their lives. Or perhaps it was just puberty messing with my head, I don't know. However, I was able to stick it out and I actually found a way to end the bullying on my own terms. I noticed that the reason Dick was bullying me was to make people laugh. So I figured that if I could make them laugh and become the funny guy, they would stop treating me like I was less than them. Being depressed and feeling sorry for yourself is easy. I challenge you to change that today. Happiness is a choice. Choose to be happy. Choose to better your life because only you can make that decision. You are not less than any- Jenna Marble's Draw My Life story is a lot different from most others because as she was telling tales from her past, she was also trying to overcome one of the biggest and saddest moments in her life. As while making this video, she had recently broke up with her longtime boyfriend and explained she doesn't know what to do. Fortunately, this was a long time ago and Jenna is doing a lot better to this day. My name is Jenna Marbles, and I'm going to draw my life. But when we were little, my parents got divorced, but that worked out all right because my dad remarried, and his wife has big boobies that I would put my face in when I was sad, and my mom's been with her boyfriend for like ever, so everyone wound up 
pretty happy. In ninth grade, I met this boy named Willie in gym class, and we wound up dating each other for four years. And we eventually broke up to go to school, but that was really nice. Field, and I was so sad and confused, and then one day I was locked out of my apartment, and this boy was moving in upstairs, and I was like, I've never seen you here before. And he was like, I've never seen you here before. Oh my like, oh, that's because you're moving, all right, whatever. Uh, you're weird, I gotta go. And so I jumped in through my window, and he just stood there and watched me. But I guess that was endearing because we dated. And we even started a little dog family together and moved in and had a family. Except I realized that it wasn't really making me happy and I wanted to make videos. And he sort of knew that too, but we could never see eye to eye and sort of ended badly. But And then I was back to really sad Jenna. No job, no direction. Don't know what I'm doing, so I just decided to make videos again after six months of not doing it because that's all I liked doing. And then I found the YouTube community, picked up enough money, and asked Max to go with me, and he did. And so we moved to Sunshine Land. But as you guys know, Max and I broke up about four months ago, and it was really sad, and it's been really hard because I don't really know anyone here, but life is complicated. And you never know what's going to happen, but if it's meant to be, it'll be. And if it's not, it won't. But now I'm sad Jenna again, and I don't know what I'm doing. And I think if I had it all figured out, I would be doing something wrong. Because I think it makes it so that you can't grow. And you have to be confused in life, or else you won't grow. But all I know is that YouTube makes me really happy. Boogie to 988 has definitely been handed a short stick in life. His life story is riddled with despair and family lost, and after it seemed like it would never stop, Boogie found a light at the end of a tunnel, and tells his story of finding hope when all seemed to be lost. What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie? I grew up in the southwestern part of Virginia in a small town called St. Paul. My mother was a teacher, but she was always very sad, and not only was she sad, but she was pretty angry about her life and everything that had happened up till then. And my brother went off to college, which left me alone at the age of nine with my crazy, angry, depressed family, which really kind of sucked. So my dad was almost always at work, and that left me alone with my mother, who was always sad all the time. And sometimes she'd get really angry and she'd scream at me, and that happened almost every day. And sometimes she'd hit me, and that happened every day too. My brother used to tell me that my dad was a pretty laid-back guy and he was kind of fun, but by the time I came around, all dad liked to do was drink, and he liked to drink Pabst Blue Ribbon, and he drank like 20 or 30 of them a day, and that's pretty much all he did. Pretty much was always sick, and because I didn't get much physical activity, I also got really fat. Eventually, all that drinking and smoking and coal mining caught up to my dad. Something went wrong in his brain. They called it alcoholic seizures, though it pretty much was just like a stroke, and it left him like a stroke victim. He couldn't work anymore, so it was up to me and my, my mother to take care of him, and all he did was pretty much sit in his recliner and stare at the wall. He couldn't really communicate. He couldn't hear because he was deaf from working in the mines, and he couldn't talk because of his stutter, and that's really, really sad. Then my poor mother, who was already pretty sad and already pretty angry, got even sadder and got even angrier and the bad stuff she did started happening more often and and the good stuff she did kind of disappeared and as you can imagine all this made me really really sad I didn't really have any friends at school either which kinda of sucked the kids at school would call me fat or, or ugly or gross and life just kind of went on like that for years I was always pretty sad and People were always kind of mean to me, and until eventually I was fatter than I'd ever been. But that was just the beginning of health problems for my family because my dad passed. And he died of cancer. And that made my mom really, really sad and really angry. And then we got some more bad news. She fell and broke her leg, and that leg would never heal. So she was unable to work. And if you thought she was crazy before, that pushed her over the edge. 
And all this bad luck and all this poor health and all this misfortune made me sadder and angrier than I had ever been. But the saddest thing to ever happen to me was about to happen. I got a phone call from the hospital and they told me that my mother was very, very sick. I came to visit her and while I was there, she died. And this made me sadder than I had ever, ever been. And I really didn't know what to do with myself. So that Christmas, I made plans to kill myself. But I didn't. I didn't because of my friend Adam. I didn't because of YouTube. I didn't because of you. Because I met this redheaded girl who saw my videos and she was really sad too because she had just buried her best friend and she had just buried her brother. And we started talking and it was awesome. And we were really interested in each other. I owe you my life. And finally, YouTuber Gay God is of course a homosexual YouTuber who tells his life story of how difficult it was to come out to his mum about being homosexual. Unfortunately, his mother reacted in the worst possible way and was not supportive at all, which made Matthew very sad. Hi, my name is Matthew Lush. I became anorexic and was 5'10", 115 pounds. Till one time, I fainted and woke up in a puddle of my own blood. I must have hit the edge of the coffee table or something. At age 14, I found my first boyfriend two weeks before Christmas. I decided to tell my mother I was bisexual. She called me disgusting and made me feel like I was worthless. She beat me with model cars I had on my dresser and her steel toe boots. She even shattered the mirror over me and ran out crying. I woke up that Christmas to find no presents. She took everything back, all but a smiley blanket she got on clearance at Walmart, which must have been non-returnable. I started coming out to my friends, and they all started not talking to me. I was alone. I tried to commit suicide three times, but thankfully survived. This was the low of my life. Thanks for watching everyone, and tell me what the hardest moment of your life was in the comments section down below if you don't mind sharing, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new around here. Goodbye.